Hey everyone, my name is Fushal Gautam and welcome to this new episode. In this video, we're going to implement the login functionality. And we're going to make a post request so that the user can log in basically. Uh, we'll also do registering and as well as sign out. So let's get started. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to copy the body of the articles browse function and paste it in the auth name space. And we will also create a handler function that handles the successful response and we'll call it register success. This function accepts a single argument called response and for now we're just going to log it in the console. And let's copy this and give it to the handler function. We're also going to copy the error handler from the articles and put it in the API namespace so that this could be reused across the application. And we're going to call it in the auth namespace and pass it as error handler. And instead of using get function, we have to use post function because we are making a post request. And we also need the JSON request format because we need to send some values, specifically the username, email, and password. And they need to be in JSON format. Uh, we also have to update the API URI. So we have to add slash API slash users. This, that's the endpoint for making a registration. And we also give a property of params, which is a map and in this value has the username, email and password. Now we have the body of the function. Let's copy this and let's paste it in the register uh, function, All right? And let's also give the registration input as the second input parameter of this function. And now we have our register function ready. Um, well, almost ready. Uh, let's go to the, yeah, so let's also add the format and let's call the JSON request format so that it formats correctly for us. Let's also remove the console log as well as the event uh, from this function. And instead of passing the event here, we'll just pass the registration input. Now, if you go to the register namespace, we will write a separate function called register. Now this register function will take two arguments, the event as well as the registration input. So instead of calling the auth register on, sub, on, on submit, we want to call the register function over here and we're going to call the auth register inside this register function. So this way we don't have to pass event to the auth register. And for now we'll just pass empty map to this function and we will implement this in the next video. For now let's try to test this function. So our register function accepts a map and in this map we should specify three properties, the username, email and the password. So there you have it and let's see the network and it looks like we have a 404. So it looks like we have made a typo. So let's delete that extra API and now let's try to invoke our function and if you go to and it looks like there's the response is 200 so it looks like we have registered a new account now if you go to the console we should see something logged so it looks like a user has been logged now the reason why it is showing like this is because we have tried to log a map so instead of doing console log let's use the print function and let's try to create a new user with a different email okay so let's call this function and there you have it. Uh, we have a new user. So now you, we can see that the user is printed properly. So now that we have the user coming back from the server, what we want to do is we want to save this user information inside the auth state. So instead of just console logging the response from the server, we're going to call the reset function on this auth state and then we're going to save the response inside this auth state. So as you can see, there's nothing inside this out state. So let's try to call this registration function again so that the response gets saved inside the atom. So if you've invoked this function, the response is 200, perfect. And now if we go to the out state and try to see what's inside, and there you go, we have a map with a single key called user and the value is a map. So there you have it. Now we have the user information. And the next step what we're going to do is instead of just saving the response, what we're going to do is we're going to save the user itself so that we don't have to go through this, uh, go through this extra step of you know calling the user. So um, it'll be easier later on uh, when we are displaying this information. So what we're going to do is we're going to destructure the user from the response and we're going to reset the auth state with the user, right? And we are also going to take out the token from 
the the user because token is what we need uh, when we are making authenticated requests and the server knows that uh, through the token who the user is right so in order to do that we have to uh, look into the uh, local storage api uh, we're going to use the the first function we're going to look at is the set item method from local storage the set item method accepts two arguments the key and the value and it saves it in the local storage um, in, in the browser right so there's that and let's just try to see how the set item works let's try to invoke it within the from from the IDE so let's say uh, um, let's give it a key called auth user token and the value will be the token that we are extracting from the auth state so let's call this function and see what happens okay so now in order to get the item from from the local storage we can use the get item method now if we invoke this we should get the token back so this is how local storage works basically it's very simple uh, and uh, the, the the interrupt between javascript and closure script make it makes it very very easy right to invoke local storage so yeah And like I said earlier, this token will be used to make authenticated requests. Okay, let's try to see if everything works. So let's try to call this function again. And now, if we invoke the auth state, it should just have the user information. Awesome. Let's also go to the, the, let's also delete all this and put it on top of the file and we'll say local storage testing. And we're going to rename the, the function register success to auth success because we will be using this function both in the login as well as register because uh, the success response is the same for both the endpoints, right? So now that we have the registration function, let's implement the login functionality now the login functionality should be exactly the same except that we are just passing the username and password so let's get uh, let's get this done okay now that we have the login login function let's test it we will use the existing information the the username and email that we just used to log in as well so if you we invoke this function we should get 200 it seems that the response is a successful response finally we're going to look at the remove item method from local storage so what this does is it removes the item and uh, it accepts a key and it removes the value if the value exists right so let's invoke remove item by passing the auth user token and now if you call the get item we shouldn't have anything on the on the local storage so that's about it for now uh, in the next video what we will do is we will connect the functions that we have just wrote uh, with the components right so the user can actually interact and uh, we don't have to use the REPL to log in so thanks again for for watching this episode and if you are if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to my channel and it'll give me more motivation to to make more content so thank you again thank you so much and have a good day and see you on the next video bye